Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, for those of you who are standing, I'm very sorry. Uh, I promise you, it won't be long. I, I, I'm asked to convert a 20 hours talk into 20 minutes. It's almost impossible. So guess what? This deck is available for download. Only if you do something. Now, what is that something? I'll tell you later. I'm being a bit different here. So today, I'm going to share to you a topic very, very close to my heart. How to work, how to understand and work with nine different personalities at the workplace. Now, I can bet you, when I introduce these nine one by one, you can identify who are they in your office. And I can almost assure you that your face will be smiling. When I mention someone, you immediately think of somebody in your office that looks like this. But the best way to learn is to ask ourselves, Am I like that? Do you, know, do you know that we are all difficult to some people? Yes? We are all difficult. Do you know why, why we are difficult? Because we are all very, very different. So, the problem with us is whenever we mention difficult people, it's always another person, it's not me. So today, I'm going to share with you nine different types of personality and I'm going to go pretty fast. So, if you'd like to take pictures, please go ahead, but make sure that I'm next to it. All right, okay. Okay, so the first guy I want to introduce to you is this guy called Mr. Perfect. He's a perfectionist. He sees the workplace as a courtroom. You ask him anything, he will say, I'm not sure, let's check with the policy. It's very systematic. How is he as a person? He is a perfectionist. On a very good day, he's very conscientious. He's very hardworking. He has high standard of excellence and he's also very inflexible, depending on whether you like him or not. He has a good eye for mistakes, your mistakes, not his. He's a very good system integrator. He's a very good gatekeeper. Now, how is he at work? Extremely demanding, dedicated and micromanager because he has a good eye for mistakes, right? So he can though be very detailed most of the time. Now, the thing I like to highlight is this. If you like him, he's very dedicated. If you don't like him, what kind of words will you use? Yeah? Can I be honest? If you don't like him, he's an anal. Let's face it, right? We have a lot of anal people around. It's because, but we are all describing him the same way. So would you like to know how to build rapport with these people in the workplace? I'm going to show you this. You have to value their advice, share their responsibility, and the golden rule is under promise, over deliver. If you say you can do a hundred, when you do a hundred, it's just pass. Because you said so. You should say, I can do 70, but I deliver 85. Because a perfectionist, what, if, what stands out from a perfectionist? It's not somebody who is very mindful about how things are done. Let me tell you one definition of, of a perfectionist. A perfectionist imposes his standard on you. I am the standard. If you don't pass my standard, you are an F. You are a B plus. You are an A minus. In their head, there's always a score sheet. That is a perfectionist. All right? He's very process-oriented. In Chinese, we say, Okay, so let's leave this guy. Let's tell him more. And now welcome the second guy. The second guy is what I call a giver. I love this person. He sees the workplace as a family. We are all part of a big group. No fighting. He hates interdepartment rivalry. Okay, so his whole self-esteem is I have to help you. You know what's the worst thing you can say to him? I don't need you. He feels very bad. And he has a problem. He just can't say no to people. He can't just say no to people. So these people are the best people to borrow money from. Because he cannot say no to you. He just feels bad about telling you no. Are you free this Saturday and Sunday? Roadshow, 8 to 8. Is it okay? He will find it very hard to say no. 
And in the workplace, he's always smiling, he's always encouraging. These people, you'll find them in customer service, social worker, nurses. That means these jobs require someone to love people. If you don't love people, it's hard to survive in those jobs. Now, how is he like in the workplace? He can relate to people easily. He has a good sense of humor. Everybody like him. The thing is, how do you work with them? How do you work with them? Appreciate them. Even though they like to help, once in a while, they need to be acknowledged. So please acknowledge their presence. Please share fun times with them. And please remind them to take care of themselves. Because these people suffer in silence. The more they suffer, the better they feel. The more useful they keep. Thank you. All right. So if you are a giver, don't need to put your hands up. I'm not going to borrow money from you. But you know yourself, if you're in the people's business, you are likely a giver. Let's leave this giver away and let's welcome the third person. A performer, an achiever or performer, likes to look at the workplace as a track and field. Everything is a competition. What is it in for me? This person loves KPI. He, is, he loves it. No KPI, he becomes very lethargic. Why? Because he wants to win. How is he in the workplace? He's highly flexible, highly adaptable, very goal-oriented, the best energy. They are likely, he has a lot of gifts. He's good in making small things look very big. He's also good in making big things look very small. So you can guess what kind of jobs is he doing? Marketing. Small things look big. PR, crisis management. Big things become small. They are excellent. They love crisis because when you have a crisis, they can leverage how to turn it around to make them look good. It's so competitive. But don't ever give him feedback. He lacks self-awareness. Don't make him lose face. Very easy to identify these people in the office. Their office, full of certificates. Full of pictures with VIP. All right. On Facebook, everything is glam. It's very easy to identify. All right. So they are super optimistic, competitive, and able to motivate people. They are natural salesmen. Most of the entrepreneurs are achiever and performer. Now, that is not the crux of the matter. The crux of the matter is how do you work with someone so competitive? Number one, small talks are not appreciated. They are so into efficiency that small talk is a waste of time. You do not need to engage in small talk. You just need to be very competent and please, no open feedback. No open feedback. It must be done in private. Okay? And if he is used to sending you email and reply within 12 hours, he expects you to do the same. His criteria for judging people is based on the level of efficiency and competency. Highly competitive. All right. So let's move this guy away and let's welcome the fourth guy. An individualist. He sees the workplace as a place to be unique. He's highly emotional. To him, not being able to stand out bothers him a lot. These people are likely to be in some form of design work. Producer, writer, singer, dancer, sculptor, anything that requires a creative talent, they are known as an individualist. Now, here's the thing. They feel so different, they are so self-absorbed, they have the wow factor because they feel and absorb the world very differently from you and I. They are very creative, inspiring, and they don't like rules. Have you ever seen the face of a designer when you reject their design? Have you ever seen the face? What color is it? Black. Why? Do you know what is he thinking? He's thinking, look, this is the masterpiece, and you dare to reject this. I am going to send this to your competitor. Maybe he appreciates it better than you. Because they are inherently self-protecting. There's nothing wrong with that. All of us are different. Don't judge them. They just want to think about themselves as someone special. So, if we say the event is black tie, they come with turtleneck. They just don't want to be ordinary, feeling ordinary, 
it's a depression to them. So they feel at a deep level, they are creative, and they decide rules. Remember, how do you work with them? Plenty of compliments, supportive friend. They love to have a friend. Be their friend and you can connect with them. Respect their gift. They are all gifted. You gotta respect them, even when you don't understand. And the, and the golden word is, if you don't understand, just say, that's amazing. <laughs> the fifth guy is called investigator or an observer. He sees the workplace as a library because he don't know enough. They are the gurus. They are very, very compactized. They are very eccentric, very smart, very perceptive, very quiet. A lot of one-liners seldom talk. In a meeting, they don't talk, but they absorb everything and they process. They are the smartest guy around. In the workplace, they are always cool and collected. They are always perspective. Guys, what is ASAP stands for? To an observer or an investigator, ASAP is as slow as possible. Because if you tell them, I need it fast, they need time and space to process. So if you need it fast, and I don't have time to process, then you don't have to ask me. I need more time. And being too friendly doesn't help. It's okay early in the morning, the meeting, you don't greet him. It's okay because for him, he needs distance. And please be straightforward. You don't have the sugar coat. Although they don't talk much, they also do not want you to talk a lot. All right? So it's very easy to spot an observer. Let's move this guy away and introduce the number six guy. I love this guy. This guy is a lawyer skeptic who sees the workplace as a jungle. He is a zebra that looks for a lion. Why? Because on one hand, he's independent, he's responsible, but he's also indecisive and a diverse advocate. Do you know why a zebra looks for a lion? When before the zebra appears, everywhere it's possible to have a lion. So he don't move. When the lion appear here, down there will be safer. Why? Because he need to see danger to confront danger. And that is why they are the most complicated type. Because they are the worst people to have a free and easy travel with. They need an itinerary. Words like see how it goes, play by the ear, to them, it's a minefield. And you definitely cannot say, don't worry. Because when you say don't worry, they worry even more. That is why they are lawyer skeptic. How do you work with them? Do not take anything for granted. Go through everything, be very detailed, walk through. If you have a terms and condition, if you have a schedule, please go through everything. Nothing must be left unknown. The, the fun part is this. He don't like you to say words like maybe, see how it goes. But when you ask them something, their favorite response is, I don't know. I don't know. All right. So you love them, you hate them as well. They are mostly found in companies who don't have changes. They love routine. They can do the same thing for 10 years and they will still be very faithful. So technically, they are the best people to marry. This guy, number seven, is a visionary. Technically, he's the worst people to marry. And let me tell you why. They are fun, they are spontaneous, they are happy-go-lucky, experiential, they are versatile, and they like options, op options a lot. They are hyperactive. To them, not having a choice is death penalty. So, they manage the workplace by walking around. They are risk taker. You know what's the favorite four letter word? Not F. The favorite four letter word is next. Whenever they have a crisis, the word is next. It's okay, no problem because I see the fun part at work. They are visionary, they can see big picture. All right, so this is really, really fun. And how do you be taking care of yourself? Don't bother them. If they are your managers, they are not only in office. And they are very short-term focused because they lack a long-term longevity energy. So they love them working like this. I can see a lot of people here are visionary. All right, you love anything short term. That's why a lot of founders in startup, they are visionary. I'm going to have the last two personality. Challenger. 
I don't have to explain a lot. If I tell you this guy is like Donald Trump, you know what is he? Or who is he? He sees the workplace as a better field. What is a better field? It's either you die or I die. One of us has to die. So their way of engaging is bang table. They're very good at it because they are very direct, so dominant, so forefront, so inspiring, so confrontational that they hurt people along the way, but they don't mean it. And most of them, they are our CEO, our chairman, our MD, and they are introvert. They are very soft in the inside, especially for people that's close to them. How do you describe a challenger? My best analogy is this. They are like marshmallow wrapped around by barbed wire. Marshmallow wrapped around by barbed wire, and you get a challenger. So, they always take initiative. They always be challenges head on, and they appreciate it. Honestly. Don't display, don't betray their trust. Ironically, how do you gain their respect? Be equally direct. It's okay. They don't take it personally. They are direct, you are direct, they love you. People like people who are like them. If you kowtow to them, they lose respect for you. They have to be strong, and they like to meet someone strong. One more thing about this person before I go on. The more opposition you give them, the stronger they become. If you don't give them any opposition, they become weak. All right, so you know what to do. You know what to do, huh? Okay. Last one. Why I put this guy last? A peacemaker is the personality that we all need to emulate. They just like to smell the roses in the garden. The problem with them is that they take too long to smell the roses. They are too zen and relaxed. Have you ever had colleagues that are very patient, no, no temper at all, no anger, everything is good, all right, and they take a long time to reply to you, they are very laid back? It's because they are very peaceful, genuine, easygoing, unpretentious. They are disengaged and stubborn. They like to facilitate. Their favorite response when they, are, when they are presented with a new idea is, I want to see what, or want to hear what the others think. To him, no conflict with the rest, it's important. They like to seek consensus. They like, that's why they take a long time to move, because they've been busy going around seeking consensus. And perfect consensus doesn't happen. They are non-judgmental, good facilitator, negotiator, mediator, and they are always patient. Okay? They are the Mr. Nice Guy in the office. But nice guys finish last. Really. So, how you ask, it's more important than what you ask. You've got to be real because they can smell a fake guy far away. And the golden rule is this. When you need to tell him something, don't ever say, I have something to tell you. Say, I have something to discuss with you. It's their word. Now, I need to stop here because I'm hard-pressed for time. I have a lot more info in my book. I think my time is almost up. I have time for one question. Yes. Hi, my name is Neetika. What happens when it's a mix of personalities? That's a good question. We are never just one type. We are at least three types. So I don't have time to explain, but I think you know your primary type. By now, you can tell what number you are. Am I right? Now, if anybody confused, is anybody confused you don't know? Nobody's confused. If you're confused, you are likely to be a lawyer skeptic. Because a lawyer skeptic will always say they don't know. <laughs> so it's very easy for me to profound you. All right. So people, if you would like to get the, this presentation and plus a short ebook on my personality, add me on LinkedIn today. Right now, I will send it to you tonight. Right now, all right, you send it, you find me on LinkedIn, and I will give you the ebook on my personality plus this presentation. All okay. right, thank you, thank you very, very much, Andrew. That was a really good session. But I have, I'm very curious though, which personality are you? Me. Well, okay, let, let's just get okay. one guess from okay. the audience. Okay. okay, let's see. Um, Sir, which, which personality do you think, Andrew? Oh, 
Oh, okay. Things, yes. Yeah, that's my guess as well. I think you're a visionary. Are we right on that? One of it. Oh, okay, he's one. Okay, okay. So one of it. Okay, and just a quick um, announcement, guys, because we have another session going on at stage two at three fifteen with Gili Charter on effective leadership. So if that's something that you're into, there's only forty seats available. You might want to pack up and move there now. Um, okay, we're okay. starting. Yeah. Okay. Just, yeah. Before you go. I like to do this, and please do it in a very orderly manner. <laughs> I like, if you think you are type 1, 2, 3, 4, if you think you are one of these personality, can you come and see me? You get a book from me, but we must take a picture. I will post on Facebook. I will announce your personality type, and the whole world will see your face. Is that OK? If you are up to it, you come and see me down here. And thank you very much for being here.